This is Spoken Gospel. We're dedicated to seeing Jesus in all of Scripture. In each episode, we see what's happening in a biblical text and how it sheds light on Jesus and his gospel. Let's jump in. Israel's monarchy will not bring God's kingdom. Solomon, Israel's most powerful king, is dead. And now, God's people are left in the middle of an inverted Exodus story where Israel is now Egypt. You see, at Solomon's death, his son inherits the kingdom. But a rival leader named Jeroboam returns from Egypt to save God's people. Many in Israel were enslaved under Solomon's rule and now look to Jeroboam for relief. Like Pharaoh, Solomon's son responds to this threat by increasing the slaves' workload. But like Moses, Jeroboam leads 10 of Israel's tribes out of slavery and into the wilderness north of Jerusalem. But as soon as they're free, Jeroboam builds new golden calves and tells Israel, here are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. Israel's history has repeated itself, except Israel is the oppressor and the man from Egypt is the liberator. Regardless, a prophet confronts Jeroboam and prophesies that a new king, Josiah, will end his idolatrous cult. As signs to prove his messages from God, God withers Jeroboam's hand and his false altar splits in two. But Jeroboam is stubborn and hard-hearted. He rebuilds the golden calves and paves the way for his dynasty's destruction. Then, in an inversion of the Passover this time, Jeroboam's son is sick and he sends his wife to a prophet for healing. But while she is still in the prophet's doorway, he prophesies the deaths of both the boy and Jeroboam. Like the firstborn sons of Egypt, as soon as she steps on her own doorstep, her son dies. Meanwhile, Solomon's son, in the other half of the divided kingdom, sets up his own idols and is plundered by the Egyptians. It's the exact reverse of Israel's plunder of Egypt's wealth in the days after the Passover. And both sides in Israel's civil war learn the same thing. Idolatry leads to slavery, loss, and death. Solomon's son and Jeroboam prove that a crown is not enough to lead Israel out of their idolatrous preferences. Like their ancestors, Israel just wants to do the right thing in their own eyes. And for Israel, the consequences of doing evil in God's eyes is going back to slavery. Ironically, Jeroboam was the master of Israel's slaves under Solomon. And Israel trusts a slaver to liberate them and ends up enslaved to new masters and new idols and death. Idols and images always lead to slavery. Both golden calves and images of an ideal and fulfilled life promise liberation but turn out to be nothing but slavers. We sacrifice our relationships, our hopes, and our morality to what looks right in our own eyes but find ourselves just as trapped as before. That's because we're still stuck in our own inverted Exodus stories, enslaved by what we thought was right. We don't need an idol anymore. We need God to liberate us. And God has shown himself, not as an image carved from wood or molded from gold, but born in the flesh. Jesus is the exact image of God and the living imprint of his nature. Israel hoped Josiah would liberate them, but Jesus is not only Josiah's son, but God's. And those whom Jesus sets free are free forever. Instead of making your own sacrifices to false gods, hopes, and idols, trust that Jesus is both your God and your sacrifice. He died as a Passover lamb to invert the story of your idolatry and death. By his blood on the doors of your heart, he liberates you from slavery to sin. And by his resurrection, Jesus inverts the grave and plunders death of its power. Jesus is the only image worth bowing to. Trust him alone and he will set you free.
So I pray that the Holy Spirit would open your eyes to see the God who brings down wicked kings. And may you see Jesus as the true King of Israel who leads all people who call to him out of slavery.